Setting up your integration with build.com is going to be, of course, the first thing you're going to want to do, which is why I made it the first lesson in this course. You have two choices, so that whichever world you may be living in, in terms of cloud accounting software, whether it be QuickBooks Online or Xero, you're able to link up build.com to either one. Maybe you'll need it for both. Bottom line is this. We're going to show you how to do both, so that this way you're covered. And you're going to find out that it's very, very easy, especially in the beauty of the way that we're going in the future when you're doing things cloud to cloud, it makes it very easy and seamless to link up these different products. So now it's time for me to show you what this looks like. Bill.com will sync beautifully with your desktop QuickBooks software. And it also syncs with QuickBooks Online and Xero. For the purposes of this course, I want to focus on the cloud because that's where I believe the future is. And that's where I believe you should be guided uh, in terms of where you want to go with your own bookkeeping practice or your own business, whatever the case might be. So, uh, and, and it's pretty easy to set up build.com with your desktop software. You're simply going to install the app locally uh, for build.com, your sync dashboard. And you'll click new and it walks you through the process. Very, very easy. Then you'll get the prompt in QuickBooks that asks you to give it permission to allow the build.com sync that dashboard to access your data and as with many of these applications you'll want to choose that option that says allow always even if QuickBooks is not running and once that's set up you just click sync here anytime you're done and the data syncs and here's a perfect example of why I think the cloud is is the future. It's more efficient. Uh, when, we, when we have it synced with Xero or QuickBooks Online, we don't have to push a button to sync it. It just syncs. <laughs> uh, and it's because that's possible because we're going cloud to cloud. So with the desktop solution, you do have to manually sync. And don't get me wrong, as you can see, I have my own company set up with the Bill.com sync dashboard because I still have my own company in QuickBooks desktop. But even that is going to change very soon and I'm going to be moving my own company's data into the cloud for all the reasons that I suggest that everybody else do it. So when we're logged into bill.com, and I'm assuming I don't have to teach you how to log in and set up an account with them, it's pretty straightforward. You set the account up and you'll enter your credit card information. But you do, if you're an accounting or bookkeeping professional who is planning on using this for your clients, you will definitely want to call them and ask them to set up the accountant's console. And that's what you're looking at here on my screen. You're looking at my Nerd Enterprises console. So if I want to add a client, I'm going to click Manage Console. And the pricing is much cheaper uh, per company when you're doing it through the Accountant's Console. So I'm going to add a client company. And we're going to set up schoolofbookkeeping.com. And I'll fill this out real quick and not waste your time making you watch me do that. One thing you'll need to choose right at this very stage is which software that you want to integrate Bill.com with. And of course, you can see by looking at this list that there's quite a list of products that Bill.com will sync with, uh, which is good to know, even Zoho. And that's something I've been suggesting to people is Zoho Books. So we're going to choose QuickBooks Online for starters. And we're going to sync that with a QuickBooks Online company. And then over here, this is important. This is another important decision you have to make right here. If I want to, and this is what I this is what I pretty much always suggest for accounting and bookkeeping professionals who are going to offer this as a service to your clients, is have the console bill you, and that way you can mark it up. Or as I recently suggested in a hangout that we did talking about how to set up a future accounting or bookkeeping practice, you're going to want to just take all these apps that you're using with your clients and build them into your monthly fees and, and scale it that way because a lot of times you'll be able to scale it because a lot of these products, as you add more clients in, it gets less and less expensive. So my suggestion is always choose to bill it to your own console. The alternative, if you don't check this, is that it will bill the client directly for it. And then the client will get an invite and they'll have to sign in and set up all their uh, payment information. So... Um, and here's where we say give permission to work on this company bills and that's going to be you know the user which is me of course and then we say save so it takes us back to our client console which is where we'll see the list of all of our clients and over here if I move my mouse over my username I can access my companies from here or I can go to view all so let's go into school of bookkeeping So now School of Bookkeeping is going to be the client of Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. I'll check off that I agree to the terms of service. Right? You should, of course, take the time to read this, and I know you're probably laughing at me when I say this, but 
you know, uh, I'm sure there are situations that come up where somebody unknowingly misuses it or violates the terms of service, and it's because they, you only have yourself to blame if you haven't read it. Um, I've seen that happen with lots of apps. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to say don't show this anymore. It lets me know that Bill.com syncs with my accounting software, QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online, or Zero. And let's just choose Get Started Now. So now here is where I have to actually connect it to my QuickBooks Online file. So this is where I recommend you make sure that you log in to QuickBooks Online. Uh, it, it doesn't necessarily matter. You don't have to. But I recommend doing it because you're going to want to kind of be in there as you're syncing this up to make sure that everything's connected and working properly. So I'm going to go ahead and log in to my sample QuickBooks Online file that I want to be able to use here with Bill.com. So I'm logged into uh, my sample QBO company file called Time Incorporated. And one of the reasons I think it's especially important to, you know, to be logged into the file that you want to connect to in QuickBooks Online is uh, if your experience is like mine with Intuit, uh, you've probably had a lot of different logins that take you to a lot of different places. I know that I recently found out that I have two different um, accounts tied into QuickBooks Online with the exact same username, but a completely different profile. When I set up my wholesale billing, one was with one version of my username and everything else was with the other, and that had to get merged. I'm actually not even sure if that ever got done. Uh, so you want to be logged in to make sure you're kind of in the right world. For example, I'm looking here, and there's Time Inc. So, and notice I've got Build Quick, Practice Ignition. So I've got some stuff in here. So we're going to click on this. And then it's confirming that I want to authorize QuickBooks Online and Bill.com to talk to one another. So we're going to say authorize. And now it's updating data with changes. Which basically the only change I'd expect, of course, at this point is that Bill.com is now going to be populated with all the information from my QuickBooks Online file, my accounts, my vendors, my customers and jobs, items, my classes or departments, and any new unpaid bills. So now you have to choose some defaults here. So if there's an unallocated expense, uh, you know, it wants to put it to miscellaneous, which is fine. And then default bank account, uh, you're obviously going to want to choose whatever your operating account is. And this, of course, is going to be the account that Bill.com is going to pull money out of in order to pay your bills when you schedule them to be paid. So choose carefully here. Uh, this I probably would change to something like uncategorized expenses. But there's no option to add a new account from here. So for now, I'm going to stick with their default. And then if I want, I can go back and change it. But keep in mind, if I change it, I have to go into preferences and update it here. So we're going to save that. And it did pick up a bill that I put in as a sample on another video that I was doing, sure enough, uh, that was unpaid uh, for Barry Goldstein. So, which leads me to wonder, actually, that it's possible that the sync on accounts payable is two ways here. So, it'll be interesting to find that out. In fact, let's test that theory right now. Let's go enter a new bill. And we'll go to Agent X. Just real quick, I want to enter a new bill and see if that syncs over. Because on the desktop version, when you're using bill.com, the AP sync is only one way. AR is two ways, but AP, you have to originate in bill.com, and then that syncs down to QuickBooks desktop. So it'll be interesting to see if this works. So let's just say we're billing somebody some accounting fees. And I'll just save it. I just want to do this real quick. Um, yes, I'm sure. Great. Now let's get out of here. In bill.com, just go sync now. So let it update the changes, and I'm just curious to see if it pulls that new bill in for Agent X. And it says sync complete with zero errors, May 16th, 10.34 a.m. Let's go to bills. And there it is, Agent X with no invoice number. So that's really good news, and I'll tell you why. This is a kind of a sidebar to this whole course. But as long as I've discovered this, then it solves a major problem in another area, which is that if you're using BillQuick online, my concern was that you want to originate bills with BillQuick 
in Bill Quick Online and have them sync over to QuickBooks. Now I know that you can do that. It'll sync over to QuickBooks and then it'll sync up here to Bill.com. So that's really, really good to know. And, and yet another reason for really thinking in terms of moving to the cloud because there's the second example so far in this first lesson of why things work much more efficiently when you're working exclusively in the cloud. When all the connected apps are all in the cloud, they just work so beautifully and seamlessly together. So that is how you set up the integration with QuickBooks Online. Next, we're going to take a look at how to set up the integration with Xero.